Well, we're doing a little commentary video here on um, on some action. Uh, this particular when did this battle take place? Let's take a look here. I forgot exactly when. I think it was in June. <laughs> it won't show. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's kind of showy. Quick. Yeah, skip it. Let's just do it this way. There we go. Okay. Uh, so yeah, June the 18th, June 18th of 2018, and uh, this is a tier one battle, tier one, uh, that takes place at 5.04 in the morning, here a little south of Chicago. Uh, one other thing to know, June the 18th, 2018, 5.04 in the morning, this is a countdown clock. See this thing here? Yeah, right there, we'll do. Over here, hurrah, there it is, countdown clock. Now, <laughs> uh, you, you know my mods, I, I suppose you've seen them before. This is light bulbs whenever um, people have, uh, well, not on our side, obviously, we know where we're at. But whenever uh, the people on the other side uh, are initially spotted, and if they are actively being spotted, the light bulb is amber. If it if they have been spotted, but we don't know where they're at, then it's grayed, but still there. So you can have ambers and grays and such like that on your light bulbs. So this is a countdown clock. This clock starts at 20 minutes. Now, some of you math whizzes out there, you're going, that's 20 minutes. Let's see, that's um, 8, that's 20, 34, though. So, that's 11 and a half minutes. 11 and a half minutes over half the game time. And the two sides have not spotted each other. They, they have not spotted us. We have not spotted them. There's a reason for that. Let's take a look here. I know the map's kind of difficult to see. Sorry. Here I am. I have been hiding here since about, oh, 19, 1850 or 1830 or whatever uh, on this count for about 10 minutes. <laughs> I've been hiding in the vicinity down in this little island here. See, see there? This is an island. I'm looking around that island right now because we're about to start the action. Uh, we're 11 minutes in and uh, our uh, our friend here, Van Wiederfoot in his house, Shidati, is uh, there hiding in my usual eastern, southeastern staging area. He's now there looking, waiting for something to happen. <laughs> for 11 minutes, nothing's happening. Uh, Wabest, oh, Wabest, and some other swan here. Uh, has been stuck in this for a while, has not moved, and uh, we will find out that uh, Wabest is in fact AFK, uh, has uh, lost connection, disconnected, I have to restart the client, I don't know what's going on, but uh, you will see this boat does not move, does not shoot, does not do anything, I don't think, in, at all, in fact, I'm pretty sure it doesn't, because the boat ends with a score of zero, uh, so, <laughs> so it was never spotted, you know, never did anything there, so it's basically two against three, we don't know this yet, Okay, we just like to, you know, you know he, I'm stopped here, he stopped there, he stopped there. We just figured out, oh, we just, <laughs> and, and there was a little discussion, a little bit of banter back and forth between some of these guys, and obviously me and Von Duvudevut and these guys and such, but uh, you'll see that maybe kick up here in the chat, uh, here in a little bit, but, uh, you know, we have been just very conservative, not wanting to give ourselves away waiting for the other person to uh, to do his bit so i'm finally deciding I, I guess if they're way up here you know i don't know where they're at at this point in time but i don't know if they're way up here why don't i try to uh, take a look and if i still don't see them still don't see them maybe i'll crawl to this next one still don't see them so maybe i'll crawl to the, you know try to get closer and closer because that's my mo as uh is try to get to point blank range so yeah so here we are over 11 minutes and have not yet spotted the enemy, nor have they spotted us. We've talked a little bit, but uh, we're, we're, we're being very careful. Why? Why do we do this? Cause, because this guy right here, me, I want to win. So does Van Wiedervoort wants to win. 
And because my best isn't here. <laughs> why do these guys, why didn't they come down? Because they want to win. They don't want. They, they don't want to go sail down. Whatever. They, they they're trying to win, and so to win is try to get your opponent out in the open. You know, so that uh, you uh, can um, you know maybe get some sort of uh, initial advantage. Okay, they want to win. It's called wanting to win. There's people that want to shoot boats. All right, that's their priority: shooting boats. Well, we've well, I've talked about my priority tree before. My priority in every match is winning. Now, winning in, uh, may involve shooting boats. It may involve uh, um, uh, racking up points in their cap by letting our cap rack points and their cap be arrested, or by capping, by literally taking their flag. Uh, okay, those are the different avenues that I can play different, you know, a bounce of different ones, but my goal is winning the match. Many players' goal is shooting boats. That's why they also go through the chimp. You know, chimpanzee maneuvers of sailing right up the middle. Ah, you know, they'll just come right out here. Ah, sail right out. And and I've got battles to where, oh, there's a guy that's getting hurt really bad, really bad. You know, he's getting shot by these people. And he's just about to sail behind the island. But no, if he sails behind the island, we'll get a shot. So he turns out to stay in sight and range of the enemies. I have... I, People just nuts. They're, most people nuts. I I use cover. Okay. I don't want my boat hit. I want to hit your boat. I want you to be out in the open where I can shoot you all I want, and I want to use cover to where you have a very small amount of me you can shoot. It sounds unfair. It is unfair. I try to make every particular encounter as unfair as possible. I want to make sure I have every advantage for me, so we can win. Because winning is the goal. Not shooting boats. That's not the goal. So I don't sail up the middle because uh, that's what the enemy's at. And so I got to sail up there so I can shoot boat. Sorry. No chimp. No chimpanzee manual cracked here. Okay. Let other people read the chimp tactical manual. So, uh, we, you know, time is ticking down. We gotta. I gotta. I gotta find some way to get ahead here. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm nosing out here. Nosing out around. I mean, where's my speed at? Look at my speed. All right, I'm nosing. I didn't stay here the whole time. I've just gotten up here lately. All right, let's get this started. This video is going to run at 25% speed, and we will skip around a little bit so you don't have to do everything. But I'm, I, I, uh, in this video is a a very salient um, uh, question, or actually statement, two statements, and. Um, You'll, I'll let you see them in a minute. One statement will say, thanks, Law. Three hits, and I'm dead. And then about 20 seconds later, the same player will state, make this statement in open chat. Would love to know how you do that consistently. Well, I saw those. You know, I'm going through all my old videos and delete this, or is this any good? And I say, oh, look at that. And then I think, well, with the videos I posted the previous couple of days, this you know where those are just uh, show the video and then you have to read the description I'm gonna just talk about talk about this one so uh, let's get through this I want to show and I have done some some effort here right, now what do I mean by some effort uh, <laughs> all right, this okay see that yeah that's a spreadsheet that I've brought into a PDF so everything reads very nicely of the three boats that I will kill well, we're gonna take a look at that as we go through this and uh, such. We're going to kick this video off. Here we are. We're going to troop along here at... Now you may go... Are we moving? Yeah, we are. You can see your clocks are moving. This one's moving down. And that's moving up. That's moving up because this is real time clock. And this is moving down because that's uh, time left in battle clock. All right, so that's a countdown. This is just uh, the regular a regular clock. All right, so here we go. We're, we're ticking along here. Oh, 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 oh. And we are spotted. And there is the first contestant. All right, he's in an Orlin. This is a uh, Gunnimal Dowan, Dowan, whatever. I don't know. Forty-five fifty in his Orlin. There, about four kilometers away or so, uh, in this situation. All right, so he sees me. That's why I'm spotted. I don't know whether I painted on his screen before he painted on mine. Uh, we'll zoom in on him in just a second. But so he's kind of doing the same thing. You know, it's been eleven and a half minutes. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's trying to see if there's something going on. So he's now the, the difference is notice I'm I was stopped. I'm still stopped. I'm only now kicking it into reverse, and we'll talk about that in a second. He, however, well, what's he doing? Let's give a couple extra seconds here. He is still moving out. See that? In fact, let's uh, you know I see him, and now you see me backing up. Why? Because if I'm out in the open, he's out in the open. Every, most people say, "Well, that's a fair fight." I don't. I don't want it to be fair. I'm trying to make it unfair. So I'm trying to move as much of my boat as I can backwards get much as much boat as possible into cover okay so that he won't have as big a target to shoot at as i will have of him to shoot at get it yeah so i'm i'm beginning my reverse but he is still proceeding out into the open precisely what i want so i now get my reticle lined up gotta lead him a little bit and i make my initial two Shots. Two shots, yes, because only my two front guns are aimed on him. My back gun, I've said this in other videos and other situations. If I ever get to use my back gun in battle, it's a luxury. All right? It's a luxury. Maybe 20% of the time on average. And perhaps even less than that. So my two front guns are busy. And uh, we're, so we're taking our initial shots here. And I'm going to be talking about uh, the time here. Uh, based upon the seconds and basically based upon about the time that the shells hit the boat and so at 49 at 49 seconds see us here we have our initial hits now you see this begin over here these things are beginning to rack things up and I'm going to clue you in on what's going on there okay I'm gonna read that with you that initial hit at three point he was at 3.8 when he hit now he's aimed right at me so he's closed another tenth of a kilometer distance uh 3.7 now but anyway at 3.8 at uh, 440 or uh, yeah 449 whatever uh the shells hit they did 182 how many shells hit two i got two good solid hits see it two good solid hits okay and did 182 damage on that. So that's two hits. All right. My next salvo, here they come. Now I'm zooming out because I know I'm getting whacked by somebody else. I'm hearing something else happening. All right. That salvo hits uh, at uh, 52. And you can see the beginning of the next score from that next uh, round of hits. And you see here what we have going on. No, I got my next hits, but we'll just leave those sitting in the air for a second. All right, what has happened? Well, the next round of hits, it hit the boat at 4 minutes and 52 seconds uh, here. Uh, I hit the boat at 3.6 kilometers. His angles, I'm going to keep even track of the angles. His angle the first time was about 13 degrees. His angle on the second hit was about 10 degrees. All right, he had turned into me, and I was turning back out again. So I have a little worse angle here, but I also had a little better um, um, tightness to my shells so I made even though the angle was about 10 degrees the first hits were 13 degrees the second two the second hits were 10 degrees I got two more hits those hits though were more solid I hit um, hit um, uh, more area that I could do damage and so the first two shells did 182 the second two hits did 364 you see that little number there 364 now you see he's turning back out again he's, what he's doing is he's weaving and I've had people say la la you can't just sit there you got to weave well, all when people weave all they're doing is give me one broadside or the other that's all I'm doing I'm just waiting for their nose to turn the other way so I can work that broadside and it turns this way I'll work that broadside I care give me your broadsides I don't care if you give them to me one alternating with one or another yes I'm taking some damage but then I've got now I'm working I'm focusing on one boat, but I got two boats shooting at me. So I'm doing the best I can. I'm as well angled here from this boat, but I'm more angled with this boat, and I can only angle so much because I've got to stay behind this island. Yeah, notice I'm still going, I'm still kicking up my reverse gear down here. See that down here? So I'm still getting, I'm still in reverse while he is getting closer to me. All right, so what am I doing? I'm getting back behind an island. What is he doing? Coming out into the open. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Perfect. Love it. All right. Now let's, uh, let's move this uh, slow boat to China along here. 
We have our next two uh, two salvos hitting here. And uh, what did we do? My goodness, look at that. All right, so the next hits uh, registered at 56 seconds on the clock for 1,282. What did we get? Well, you see that four went to five. We got one hit, and then we got two citadel hits. All right, this is, this is not included in this. I used to think that this was included in this number, but this is a separate uh, number from this, and it always is even up here. Citadel hits uh, have to be added to the regular hits to know how many total hits you got on a boat. So anyway, I continue to learn things. So I got two Citadel hits and one uh, just, you know, regular non-Citadel uh, hit. And that uh, batch of three shells, two Citadels, one regular, garners us 1,282. Now, that I have shot three times. All right, and I have hit him with three salvos, okay? Uh, or you can say I've hit him with a total of seven shells out of, uh, out of nine, okay? Because uh, my guns fire two and two, uh, so that's, uh, is that right? Yeah, you know, one, two, three, four, four times eight, 12. Okay, so out of 12, uh, I've hit him seven times. Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so far so I've had shells miss but I'm hitting him you know relatively okay and uh, that's why I get to point-blank range because even though the swan is horrible in its dispersion but if I'm in very close range here I'm at 3.5 uh, his angle with that third hit was about 29 degrees he's continuing though to turn hard at this point in time to where now just a half second afterwards he's already at a, you know for about 41 degrees and continuing to turn so anyway, let's keep going here. All right, so there's 1,282 after three salvos. Here's my fourth salvo. Again, just my two front guns. And they make contact at 59. We'll call it 59 there. And let's let that register up. There we go. So we see now the fourth salvo that I hit is, um, you know, at 59, basically. I know, I let it go a little bit more, so we're at 5 double O, but anyway. Uh, his distance was about 3.5. He was about 48 degrees on me at the time because now he's turning back toward to nose in on me again. He's trying to, like I said, he to him, he's weaving. To me, I'm just taking the shots and happily he keeps presenting a bit of broadside every, you know, few seconds. Uh, so here we go. So, yeah, we got uh, on this one, we registered three hits. So that five went to an eight. And we registered one more citadel. So that two citadels now go to three for 942 but how many times have I shot at him four salvos okay four times I've shot at him all right and you can see hey what's this these are the beginnings of the fifth salvo there's my two gun there's the other two uh, there and now my guns have been knocked out and so I'm checking things out here quick because I get whacked good and uh, what do we got we got another hit now that Fifth salvo, uh, he was at about 3.4. His angling was about 25 degrees. He's still turning back in. I get one hit. Okay, it turns to nine, and we'll see this uh, show up here. And one ricochet. So one shell hits for a solid hit, not a citadel, just a, a you know, all right hit, whatever. One shell hits, and then one ricochet. So I get. Look at that, only 91. Nine, yeah, what if I was trying to do that 91 at a time? I'd be dead 25 minutes. So I have to, I've lost a turret, but I, as I've said before, I always lose. A, I, I, out of every three games, two of those games, I will have lost a turret. That's just the way it is. So I'm going to hit the, uh, the, the repair and get my turret back. And I'm checking over to see why I've lost the turret. I'm getting a big picture again to see what's going on he's out but he's still why can he shoot me even though I can't see him it's called spotting mechanics he can shoot me and he can shoot me with accuracy even though I can't see him he can shoot me into accuracy because he sees what his partner sees all right so since I'm spotted by this guy this guy that I can't see because my I don't have any partners up there spotting him so I can't spot him but he can shoot over that with accuracy because he's seeing what 
his friend sees. That's spotting mechanics. Most people don't understand that. You know, most people, <coughs> I won't mention CZ man by name, but anyway, most people would say you can't do that. Hey, if you shoot, I should be able to see you, but I can't. I can't see him because he is, that island is between, or there's some sort of landmass. Maybe it's this island, little island here. This little island, he's probably sitting back there. So I can't, I don't have a direct line of sight, so I can't see him. He can, but he can shoot me with accuracy because his partner sees me. So that's spotting mechanics. All right, so I'm checking out why I'm getting hit with such robustness here. And I'm seeing that I'm being whacked by, the, by his partner. And his partner is just chewing away my health. So I'm coming back. I've hit the repair. Getting my gun back, trying to get myself resituated uh, here. And uh, let's see, what do we got? Yeah, one more shot we're going to do. We're at 1,693 he has left on the boat. 1,693 he's shooting at me, my, la my salvos. Here come my last two from my front guns. And we... Okay, get ready, because this is going to go away. This is going to go away. Everything's going to go away because he's going to go to dead. All right, in just, just a moment. This last salvo, uh, connecting as it did at about 07. It's, we're into 08 because we're in the middle of connecting. Bang. Okay. Now, what has happened here? A lot of stuff fly, you know, a lot of ribbons and such fly up there. What happened, I had to take this slowly myself. <laughs> what happened is on my last salvo, I got one more hit, you know, just a regular hit, but three of my four shells, all four of those shells that I shot hit his boat. One for a regular hit and three. Or see that two? See that two right there? That two is going to go to a three, I believe. There you go. See it? Yeah. One hit and three citadel hits. Well, each citadel is 550, so 550, 1100. Uh, 1650 so I'd have done about 1650 but that I did hit the boat non citadel but I hit him with at least one hit and usually one hit is good for at least 55 so I just barely crossed over the top of his of his health all right so the fact that all four shells hit three citadels and one regular gives me a sink of his boat there all right so sinking his boat and we've done this slowly you can go back in the video and video is nice you can just see what's going on here sinking or uh, sinking his boat took me six salvos six I had to shoot at him six times um, which would since I'm shooting at him with two turrets each which would, which would, you know, six times two is twelve. So, uh, and uh, and since each turret has two guns, uh, twelve times two. So, you know, I, I fired uh, twenty-four shells at him. Twenty-four. And out of twenty-four shells, which basically uh, burns down to six shots, six salvos, I got ten hits and one ricochet. So that's 11 hits there, 10 hits that scored damage, one ricochet, I don't think that did. And then six citadels altogether. Okay, so that was six salvos, or, um, you know, 12 if you're counting, you know, 12 if you're counting the, the turrets, and 24 if you're counting the amount of barrels shooting and all that, whatever. But let's just say I shot at him six times, six salvos of my two front guns. My back gun never participated, couldn't, because it, it was, uh, it couldn't, you know, it could not get the uh, angle. All right, that's why I use my front guns. All right, so let's let this travel for just a second here. Uh, so six times that I hit him, or six times that I shot at him. Uh, hitting him 11 times, 10 times for good, and then six citadels. So there you see the counts here. All right, 10 good hits and one ricochet equal 11, and then the six citadels. See that okay? Okay. Now, we're going to take a look right here and watch what's going to happen. He is dead now. So he's immediately on his keyboard, and he writes that fateful statement coming up now. Thanks, Law. Three hits, and I'm dead. Uh, okay. 
Uh, how many hits? Three hits. People sometimes build their own reality. They do. Uh, they and it's one thing to imagine a situation, but there is a great deal of power when you make your imagination audible. Uh, I'm a Christian, and part of uh, a Christian conversion uh, involves. <laughs> Literally, it involves confession. I'm not talking about the confession that uh, Romans uh, do. You know, part of the people part of the Roman Church where they go in the little booth and they confess their sins, and then somebody gives them absolution. I'm just talking about in the initial conversion. You confess that you are guilty. Okay. Uh, now, most things happen in the head and in the heart, as you know, colloquially speaking, but you know, the, uh, the faith of Christians, informed by Jesus, has commanded confession, making audible the repentance, the thing that we're to do in our heart, which is a change of, uh, of understanding, a change of mind, a change of thinking. But don't keep that to yourself. Make that known. Confess it. Open your mouth and let the things that have gone on in your mind come out. Because confession is is powerful. First of all, it it it, um, it allows others to recognize your present state of mind, understanding, whatever it may be. But you hearing you say these things um, also is a powerful tool uh, to solidify um, the commitment that you're making because you've now made it out loud. You're not just, you know, thought a thought and, uh, you know, think, oh, that's a, I, you think, I, that's a good idea, I'm going to do that. So he has now made this confession, so to speak, to himself. Three hits and I'm dead, he says. So in his mind, he believes that somehow I took him from full health to dead in three shots. Now, we know that in a swan, the best I can do Per shell is 550 damage. That's the best I can do. That is a citadel hit on any of these boats. A citadel hit is worth 550. It's just a it's a it's a it's a set number. It's not a floating number based upon where on the boat I hit. If I hit a citadel, I get 550 points taken off that boat. 550 divided times three. You know, three hits, he said. Three hits. He has what? Well, what is that? Uh, 550, 1100, 1650. So, if he's got a boat of 4550 minus 1650, uh, 35, uh, 29, he's wondering how I was able to, uh, to do 1650 damage and take out a 4550 boat. He says, where's the other 2900? You know, this is the thing that's, that can go through people's minds. I was full health, and in three hits you took me down. Now people say that's impossible to do, and they are right. So if you find somebody doing something in a game that's impossible, what's the next option to think? Mm -hmm. Cheat. Now, Gunnamil here, for his part, does not accuse me of cheating. But because the action happened so quickly, and you got to understand, all of this happened uh, in a space of, uh, let's see, from 49 to 7 seconds. So you got 7 on the one side and 11. So in the, in the space of 18 seconds, he is, goes from full health to dead. He and his friend are shooting at me. He, on his part, is not only trying to get um, shot at a boat that is receding. Remember, I'm giving him less and less of my boat. Remember, I used to be up here, <laughs> and I backed up. So as that battle went on, he continued to stay out in the open, but he continued to have less and less of a shot at me. So he was angling to get a shot at, at less and less of a boat. He also had a friend shooting, and yet, so he, and, you know, and, and he's also doing his dance, and yet he gets whacked. And this is why, this is the main reason I'm doing this video and talking about it. Three hits, impossible. Well, if you're doing something impossible, you must be cheating. And uh, and I just wanted to address that right off the bat before we get to the other stuff that's going to happen here. Uh, because, you know, people can say that. 
And then later on, that three hits will could stick in somebody's mind, his or somebody else's. Yeah, I saw oh, I take a, a boat down, a lot, full health, and in three hits, that boat was gone. What they're doing is they're supplying the memory of the fact that I took this boat down practically immediately, a little tidbit of information thrown in from somebody else that it was just three hits, and then they amalgamate that into a truth, their truth. It's not the truth, but they're their truth but we saw it we counted it up here and and you know like i said i got, i put a spreadsheet i mean i'm not doing this just from rote memory or whatever like that i mean here it is you know you 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 see the uh, see the sheet that's here you know there's our times that the hit there was the angle or the distance how far away from me uh each time and uh, the various anglings of the boat okay so he's never just nose on as it were uh, how many hits are here? How many shatters? We didn't get any shatters, no over pins. We got one ricochet, so 10 total plus one is 11 and six. There's all of our damage. That is what happened in real time. And these are the totals of what happened in that little battle with him in real time. Okay? Now you might say, hey, what are these other things? We'll talk about that in just a second. Sorry. Let's, uh, in fact, let's, let's go ahead and talk about that next what we want to do is I want to move ahead here well okay let's let this play out a little bit more here and um, I don't want to do it here uh, now we'll just let this play for a second uh, what we're gonna do is we've got we've spotted a second guy we have sunk the first guy notice he could not help he was he was just totally on the wrong side of the map had all sorts of land masses between him and me so he couldn't help remember this one's afk down here all right so there's nothing he's gonna do uh that's there killed one i've spotted a second spotted a second so i make my apologies here um, you know I did not, at the time, I didn't know how much I had hit him, you know, I, I was not analyzing anything, I was trying to stay alive, because uh, I'm here down about, um, you know, 45% down on my health, and I've only got one boat, and I have two boats, and one of the two I have left is an Erie, and I'm beginning to figure out that Wabast isn't there, I'm beginning to figure that out, and that this guy is going to take a while before he can come help me, and I've already got a swan there, and uh, one other thing that's concerned me by this time as I'm backing up is that he has not seen the Erie. All right, he's out here in open water. He's not seen the Erie there. He's not seen the Erie there. The Erie does not seem to be there. Now, here's the second thing. Love to know how you do that consistently. Remember, I told you this, these things would come up and, uh, and such. And so he is, you know, he knows that this is my modus operandi. This is what I do. When I see a boat... I attempt to eliminate that boat as quickly as possible. A lot of times people will be shoot, you know, shoot a boat here and you know, they'll take a few shots at this boat and they'll take a few shots at that boat because they just float around and shoot at different boats of uh, targets of opportunity. When I'm engaged in combat with a boat, generally I am so close to that boat that that boat has got to die because if he doesn't die, he will kill me. I am generally shooting, when I shoot a boat, I'm generally shooting the boat that will kill me. And in this case, uh, Gunnamill would have killed me. Why? Because there's, there wasn't another boat. Most people floating out in here, seven boats floating all across here, nine boats floating there, and I'll shoot some of this, and then he fades out, so I'll shoot some of this. And, you know, and they engage in multiple uh, tidbitty shootouts with multiple boats. And so boats live for quite a long time in that environment with various stages of health but gunnaman here because of the way i play he went from full health to nothing in the space of 18 seconds okay because he was the only boat in my in my sea i had to kill him or he would kill me okay uh and such and so most people are not used to to this type of experience they're used to oh i got shot for a while and then i don't know what to do, and then i'm going to shoot some more and oh this guy shot me so i'm going to zoom away and he's going to find a better target so i'll live with some lesser health and such and th and they live going you know incrementally down over the space of 10 minutes Gunnamil is wondering what is going on because he knows that generally when i engage a boat they live for the space of 20 seconds or less because I play differently 
than most all other players in tier one. I play differently, and that's that's what he he'd love to know how you do that. That's what I do. I'm not just another boat that's going to shave 300 health points off of your health bar, and then you're going to go sailing away, and I'm going to find something else to shoot at. No, it's not the way. It's not the way I play tier one. Okay, I get up close, and when I engage, disengagement means somebody died. Okay, and I'm going to try to make sure that it's the opponent, and I'm going to try to make sure that happens multiple times. By the way, I'm going to try to also make sure that it happens multiple times, one at a time. There's some morons that will sail up. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go shoot a point blank. But they're getting shot by two, and then three, and then four while they're shooting a boat, and then two boats are shooting at it, and then three boats are shooting at it because they, they don't They don't assess their tactical situation to try to make sure that they do a one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I didn't wasn't quite prepared, but I did my best. I was a one-on-one, -on -one, kind of a one-on-two, but thankfully I was kind of bow on to the second one, and certainly bow on nearly bow on to the first one. So now, so it was essentially a one-on-one -on -one battle. I lost a lot of health because there was a second boat in the in the deal, but I didn't lose as much as I could have. Now I'm going to try to make it a one-on-one -on -one a second time. I don't know where that swan, that swan turned back this way. I still don't know where the Erie's at. See this? Look at this. This guy has sailed through here. And in all that time, he has not seen an Erie back here. He's not seen an Erie up here. He's not seen an Erie over here. And now that he's there, he's not even seeing an Erie lurking around here in the midsection where I would not have been seeing him this whole time because I was hiding. He has not seen an Erie anywhere. So where does that probably mean the Erie's going to be? In my sea. I don't know where the swan's at. But I do know the swan has taken shots at me already. And the Erie is... Uh, the Erie, you don't even see... The, you see the swan, last reported position. We don't even see the Erie. Is he over here? Is he coming around down this way to ambush? Is, well, I don't know. We don't know. And I don't know where this guy is. It's been a while since that, that position was reality that's the last reported position but that was you know a minute or three or four ago whatever so i'm nosing out this way notice i'm stopped and i'm easing my speed down letting my speed bleed down here see it coming down yeah yeah because i'm stopped waiting to see what's out here waiting to see if something develops if something pops in and i'm still easing out because i'm letting my speed bleed off here not quite sure how what what's next, but I don't want to sail out in open water and then suddenly, oh, here's the Erie and oh, here's the Swan, and now it's two on one and I'm going to die. I don't play like that. I'm sorry. It's not the the chimp manual, the tactical manual is not used here. Okay, I don't want to get out in the middle and possibly be the target of two boats. I have done that hundreds of times. I have learned my lesson as well. All right, most people. I play game after game with them, right up, right up. I don't know how many times it's going to finally. I, I, is that fun? I, it wasn't fun for me. I said I got to play a different way because I want to. I want to play boats. I want to win. I want to play and I want to win. Most people just want to get in here and sail up, shoot a few boats, and die. I don't. I guess that's fun for them. So anyway, I'm waiting to see if. Well, where do you go? Where do you go? If some of these rubes will stick their nose out. And again, give me their position, and then I can assess whether I want to shoot from where I'm at, whether I want to maneuver, try to get a better position. I don't know where they're at, but I'm watching to see. I also know that I've got some eyes coming along here from this side. All right, so he can see up here to see if there's an area. He can see up here to see if he's an area and or a black swan. So I'm waiting. Okay, yeah, the video is running. All right, notice here. It is, it's running slowly, but it's running. Okay, And uh, so I'm watching to see what develops. And I also know that anything he sees, I also will see. So I'm in no big rush. As you can see, we've been waiting for quite a while. <laughs> We're at almost, almost 14 solid minutes into the match. And uh, now I'm lamenting the fact that we really are just two boats. Well, our, this third boat that we have is, is a non-player at this point in time. This boat's easing up very slowly well everything i know is pretty slow here i'm just looking around because i get tired and then i notice this what do we got yep oh look worst case scenario there's the eerie in my sea coming this way coming 
down around to whack at my rear end where I only have one gun. Okay, well, Where's that blooming swan that was whacking away at me? I don't know where that swan's at. I'm assessing how I want to deal with this. Do I want to back up? I'm just still stay. You know, I really, I'm wishing that swan would show up somewhere, somehow. Hoping, you know, but thankful. They, why do I see that eerie, by the way? I can't see him. He's got line masses all over the place. I see him because my teammate sees him. That's why I see him. That's the spotting mechanics of, um, and notice my teammate's taking some wax at the eerie. That's why the eerie, when I do meet the eerie, will be down somewhat in his health. It is because my teammate uh, began whittling uh, a little bit of health away from him. And hey, every little bit of health off of an eerie is just fine with me. Just fine uh, with me. So we're going to go through this battle here. Uh, what do I want to do? Let's move this along. Okay, yeah, well, there we go. Uh, is that where I wanted to get? In? Uh, uh, right there, okay, okay. All right, so the here he's shooting back, he's shooting, and now I'm spotted. How am I spotted? That eerie is uh, two land masses away because that black swan is less than two kilometers. At less than two kilometers, of course. <laughs> <laughs> even land masses can't keep you unspotted see he's at 1.8 kilometers see that 1.8 the area is behind the island that's why the area has disappeared from the side of my partner that means he's also disappeared from my side that's how it works some people go how do you suddenly disappear he's so close because somebody else was looking at him and they can't see him and you can only see what they can see and if they can't neither can you so i know that i've got to take an opportunity to try to whack this swan before this eerie comes around does his bit so i zoom in my gun i'm on my back gun so i have to hit the c or whatever that moves me to the viewpoint of my front guns and i begin firing and so does he he is whacking the lala as quickly as he can as my health bar comes down look at this wait 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 oh no okay my initial hit from my two front guns see there's his two front guns talking looking at me Oh, that's a nasty look. All right. I also fired my initial salvo. My The rest of my boat was still in, in the back here for a second. Um, but my initial salvo did 1,210 damage. Now, you might say, how did that? How does that work? Uh, I'll show you how that works. Uh, it works this way. Okay. Uh, here's the initial salvo at 744. Okay. Uh, he was at 1.7 kilometers from me. He was at an 86 degree angle, so he was almost 90 degrees on to me. Almost a, you know, a T, uh, a straight on uh, 90 degrees to my gun barrels. Anyway, um, what did I get? Well, on that initial hit, I got two overpins. See that? Two overpins uh, there and two citadels. And two overpins and two overpins, two citadels. Well, two citadels are what? Well, they're they're worth um, 1,100. All right, 550 twice is 1,100. Yeah. Uh, so two citadels, 1,100, and then two overpins uh, for 110. Uh, there. So uh, that's what you that's what you see going on here. Two overpins, and two citadels. Okay. That was off my initial salvo. That's shot number one. For my two front guns. Okay. Now, I'm going to let this play out. There's my next salvo for my two front guns. Yes, there they go. All right. And they landed at about uh, 46, 47 uh, uh, there. That's where the hits registered. Let's see if I get my. Uh, yeah. Okay. So here's my. Uh, see this 1282? And uh, this 1282 comes from, again, Let's take a look at that second, uh, that second hit that we have coming up here. That second hit at 7:47, we got quit. Still same distance. Eh. Uh, he's beginning to angling angle away from me. You see that? Uh, I got only one hit this time. I got no hits last time, but just two, but two citadels. This time I got one hit, but no overpins or ricochets, but two citadels for the 12. 82 damage on that second one. Now, 
You may go, what's the stuff in the red? What happens is, is for a while, my boat is full out in the open, which means my back guns get to play. So the shots that you see in red are are the uh, uh, the two barrels of my back turret, my back one turret that hardly ever gets its bit. Okay, uh, so you're going to see uh, initially uh, a 550. That's my back turret hitting one shell hitting uh, the citadel, the other one missing. Okay, and you're going to see it at two seconds later, a little over two seconds uh, later, um, at 750. You're going to take another another 550. That was another citadel hit for my back gun, and then another two, almost three, you know, a little over two seconds later. Uh, again, two more overpins for 55. Uh, they are my back gun, and then at 55. So anyway, well, we'll let's play this out. Let's we'll see how this works out here. Okay, here we go. So uh, that was my two front guns, and this is see that that's my initial back gun. One citadel for 550. Here again are my shots for my two front guns. There's one, and there's the other one. All right, those are my two fronts. That's my back gun. That's that's coming in there, but my two front guns have already hit. And, uh, and, and again, what are they hitting for? Okay, well, after my, my, you see, this is at, uh, what, 49? Yeah, so at 49, you see the 49 uh, there for, uh, uh, for Grogan's situation. The front guns hit at 49. We got one hit and three citadels for 1,800. And then that's, you see my back gun. Uh, shells are flying and you'll see another 550 for another single citadel hit there but this particular hit here really did some hurt three citadels all four of my front guns hit one for a standard hit three for citadel hits uh, there you so you see that um, uh, played out here you'll see this uh, this number pop up here in just a second for 1800 Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And then you'll see the second 550 from uh, an another one of my two back gun shells um, hits the citadel. And so here comes a 550 floating up. That's from one. So again, <laughs> uh, we, we, we are at 50 seconds here. We are at 50 seconds. This boat was at full health. 1,600 or 6,450 6, was its health. And it was at 6,450 six seconds ago. So in six seconds, it has gone from full health to what? About 15% in six seconds. All right. So here's 18. Here's another 550 from my back gun. At 52, we'll get a couple more. We'll get some more hits from my front guns. There's my next front gun salvo hitting the boat there my back gun salvo you see it beginning to disappear but at the same time there's the two front guns score uh hits here at 52 so we're now eight seconds into this battle with this swan and uh and what does that uh, that do well nothing too exciting only two of my shells hit i only get two hits from my from the two front guns that shot i only got two hits out of it uh, so the rest of them were just waste missed Overpins, whatever. Uh, there, and um, so we get 255. Now you recall my back gun shells. Let's let the video move. My back guns scored only what? Well, this time they got they scored two overpins. See that now went to four uh, here, and uh, but that only equate came out to 55 damage. So. <laughs> So now we are nine seconds into the battle, and this thing has gone from full health down to about 700 health okay, at nine seconds into this engagement. All right, now what are we going to do? Well, there, what are we going to do? I'm going to take another couple of shots from my front guns, but by this time, look at his angle. Almost totally straight against me here. So you should probably expect what? No, not too much. Well, you go, wait, that's 550. Well, yeah, because one of my shells, three of those four shells, you saw the four shells, you know, for the guy, four barrels on my two front guns. Three of the four missed, but one 
uh, shell um, hit, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, one shell hit the Citadel. Now, that 550 is not this blowing up. Okay, that 550 is not the shot that blows it up. Three of my four shells from my front gun shots missed. One hit the Citadel, brought him down to practically nothing. Practically nothing. He only had 700 and something, and he's lost 500, so now he's down to practically nothing. So what finished him off? Well, one that, one, that last salvo from my back gun just barely reached him. And we may catch a sight of that number, 167. All right, so that back gun of mine in its last ditch, I mean, I'm moving backwards. See how I'm moving backwards, five knots backwards? But when I shot, I was here. When I shot, that gun just had enough time for one more. If I would shoot, if they, he was still alive and I shot again, that back gun would start hitting the rock because I'm moving backwards. But I was out here which means that gun was right there and just got the piece of him. And the piece of him was one hit, one solid hit, and two ricochets. Why ricochets? Because he was at a, a crazy angle to me. I mean, he, he was only uh, you know, about 12 degrees deflection uh, and such. So, um, so one shell missed, two shells ricocheted, or, or excuse me, um, yeah, yeah, one ricochet, excuse me, one ricochet, I guess, and one hit uh, there off my back gun. And that uh, that hit brought us to 167. It finished him out. And so, he is now dead. We initiated this combat at 42. Uh, no, excuse me. At 44 seconds. 11 seconds later, he go, he's at full health. 11 seconds later, he is dead. Okay. So again, that's the way I play. People are not floating around. When they're dealing with me, they're not floating around. It's 89% health and 71% health and 43% health and 22% health. And they've been shooting away and they've been being shot at for a while. When I engage in combat, the way my style of play, if this is what I try to do, within between 10 and 20 seconds, you, go, you can go from full health or any whatever health you are to nothing. All right? That's my style of play, to take people out quickly, immediately, as immediately as my shots can. Okay? And so this is what gets some people upset because they, they don't get to engage with me. They don't get to, to play with me. Now, take a look. Remember, my boat was, I was at about 60% of good, 55, 60% good. Now, look, I've taken a ton of damage, a ton of damage, and I've been broadside to him the whole time. What's the difference? I think that the difference is I know where to aim. I know to take the citadel shots every time. I'm always aiming for the citadel, even if you only give me a sliver. Even the barest sliver, no, not there. The barest sliver of boat. Where am I at? No, not there. <laughs> Let's let this play out. What am I talking about here? See, here's the citadel on the swan right there. There's the citadel. And that's where I'm aiming for. All right, I'm aiming slightly up and slightly in front so that my shells will end up in the citadel. Even here, even when I only have a sliver, I'm still shooting for that citadel. Now, you might say, why are you shooting high? Why are you shooting so high? Well, because if I shoot on the water line, I am assured that some of my shells are going to go into the water. Why? Because the swan is massively inaccurate massively inaccurate I want every shell to hit if possible so I bias down to get as close to the waterline as I can but I'm always I try to always aim above the waterline so that even shells that fall under still have an opportunity to hit at or just below the waterline instead of dumping out in the water and doing nothing okay so and you might say well you have time to think about that yeah <laughs> Right, and you play over 5,500 games in this boat. And that's just the Mer North American server. That's not the Russian. And you count the Russian, European, and Asian servers my time in the Swan. Uh, I've probably got over 8,000 games in the Swan. Maybe even nine. Yeah, oh, if you count all four servers. So I know the tendencies of these guns. 
So, yes, I'm aiming high, not because I just wanted to. I'm trying to hit the Citadel, but I'd rather my shots always hit the boat, mostly hit the Citadel, you know, if at all possible. So, anyway, I figured I'd lay that one in there. But this is what upsets, I think, people when they play against me, is I don't allow them to slowly get whittled down in health over a span of 10 minutes. I usually take them from full health to nothing in a span of 10 to 20 seconds. No, I'm not cheating. It's the way I play. Get in, point blank range, know precisely where to hit, continue to hit them. Make sh as sure as possible that you are as small as possible a target for them. Okay. All right, we got to move on. This this video is going on. Yeah, yeah, we've seen all that. We've seen all that. Fine, fine, fine. All right, now we got this eerie coming up. I'm moving the video ahead here. I've got a video. A video, a video, an eerie coming up. Looks like he's at forty fifty nine. All right, forty fifty nine. I know that this boat's not going to help. And look at this boat. This boat's done all the damage it appears that it's going to be able to do. It might do a little bit more. I don't know. But it looks like it's stuck over here and capping. It looks like he's kind of doing what I would do anyway. So it's me and the eerie. So I'm making my maneuver. What am I trying to do? Well, am I going to sit, sit right here with my broadside to the Eerie? Sorry. Chimp is not spoken here. Okay. I want that Eerie to come out this way and give me his full beautiful broadside. And you know what? When he comes out there, what I want him to see is the tiniest bit of my boat he can. So if I get nose onto him, he's got the tiniest target. And if he comes out broadside, I have a, a target so big it stretches on both sides of my monitor. That's what I want. And that's what I'm working diligently to do. I don't know how he plays. I don't know if he's going, oh, Lala's getting set up for a kill shot here. I'm not going to come around. I don't know, but I, I know that whatever's happening, I've got to have my nose pointed at the Erie so that he has, as, look at it, as tiny a target. Because I haven't got anything left. And I've got an Eerie. Look at the Eerie. Look at the Eerie's health. An Eerie at health like that can kill three of me. Four of me sometimes. So I zoom in. That's it. I am at optimal range. The only problem is that one of my shells in my, in my salvos, each salvo for the first two or three salvos, I think, at least one of my shells are going to shoot low and, run, and shoot into this, uh, this ice embankment. And so I only get three out of the four shells hitting the boat. <clears throat> man, oh man. But thankfully, his guns are not tracking on me. They're still pointed away. They're going to get a shot, but at least they're not shooting initially coming around that corner. I'm not shooting initially because I'm in the middle of lining up. And that's just, what, okay, so there's my shot. You saw that first one just disappear right here because it hit the, the island, whatever you want to call it. But the second one is is coming in to register a hit. Both of these are high enough to get over that. And uh, they register uh, their hits uh, there. Okay, so you see three of the four shells. See that? Three. Fourth one disappeared for, what, 182. Uh, 182 damage. Okay. Uh, yeah, so three hits for 182. His guns are still not pointed at me uh, here as of yet. See this? Still not pointed at me. So I'm, I'm <laughs> thankfully, I am so thankful he was ill prepared. So every second he's not shooting. Now you might say, uh, you seem to be shoot getting so many shots off. I do. You know why? Because I'm here at uh, what? About 20%, around 20%. If you take a look, I, one of the skills that I have in my captain is uh, Adrenaline Rush. At 20%, already I have a, a captain that reloads faster. So instead of a 3 second reload, I had 2.7. But with Adrenaline Rush, my reloads, at this point in time, I am reloading, a pro I am getting shots off approximately every 2.3 seconds. Not 2.7, 2.3. So because I am so severely damaged, I have more than doubled just what my, um, my captain uh, in this captain skill gave me by, uh, uh, I think it's advanced fire training. No, basic fire training, where it speeds up uh, uh, your your load. So I've actually, now with Adrenaline Rush, I've got uh, stacked on top of basic fire training, 
instead of a three second reload, I'm reloading every 2.3 seconds. So I've shaved seven tenths of a second off of my reload speed. And the lower that gets, the faster I, I reload. So that's why it looks like I'm getting fast reloads, because I am 2.3 seconds at this point in time, around there. You know. All right, so let's keep going here. So I'm reloaded again, and shoot, and here's another shot. Uh, hits the island and, and disappears because they shoot low. But one of those two, sal one of those two sh uh, um, shell bursts gets in, and then the second gun shoots higher, you know, because it's up a little bit uh, on my nose. And so it's getting most all of its shots on the boat. So we have another three. Now he's taking his initial shot at me. And look at my, well, look at my health, man. One shot, and he's taking me down. But I've hit him three more times. See that six there? So that second salvo also hit him three times, uh, but this time for 363, I believe. We're so close over here that we can't even see the numbers flying uh, anymore. That's how close we are. All right, I'm reloaded again. So I'm shooting again. This time my lower guns and my upper guns take him, and I finally get a citadel hit. Yeah, I'm at point blank range. I am less than one kilometer. I'm at point I'm eight tenths of one kilometer. I mean, he's right up against me, and I have to get that close to Citadel and Erie. Understand that. The reason you're seeing a Citadel is because the Erie is practically 90 degrees to my guns, right? Just about that uh, here, and uh, and I'm shooting just behind the funnel. And this area is where where you Citadel your Erie. That's why I'm shooting here because he's going fast. So my gun, I'm not hitting there. But by the time I shoot there, his boat has moved to where I'm hitting him right about there. So that's the way. That's the way leading uh, the target, and my target is not the. Understand it. My target is not the Erie. My target is this little section of the Erie. Do you understand the difference? Okay, because I have got to knock this Erie down. This Erie's got tons of health. I have no health. He's all of his guns are pointed on me. I've got to somehow kill a boat that can kill five of me. I can't afford to hit him here. And hit him here and hit him here I've got to hit him here and I've got to get black ribbons I have got to or I will die this is all there's to it I mean I've got, I've got nothing left <laughs> so so there's a black ribbon one I need more than one but at least one what did that third salvo do I got three more hits so now I'm at nine and I did a, a citadel hit so I did 900 about 983 on my figure my calculations uh, on that boat so now I take my fourth shot this is the fourth shot that I take lower guns go in upper guns go in all right you see those see the citadels hits stacking up all right now so I've got now I got that fourth salvo I got one good hit so that goes from nine to ten and three citadel hits see that went from one to four so that that salvo did over 1500 1530 uh, something or other like that uh, on that Erie so now now look at the Erie and look at me but look at the Erie he's shooting his guns man oh I just and look he's taking that you know he's whittling down my health as well because he's a point that you almost can't miss and I'm sadly presenting him a bit of broadside but there's not much I can do about it because all of this is happening within about five seconds, you know, and so I just, there's not a way to really move. I can't go forward anymore because I'm against the ice. I can't quite back up because the ice is on my nose. So the best I can do is just hope for fast reloads. As I've said before, my guns cannot shoot fast enough. Cannot shoot fast enough. So now I have lost a gun. I The gun, thankfully, that gun got off its shells before it got whacked okay it got its shells off I think before it got whacked and I get a citadel hit another hit so I get one regular hit one citadel hit and that's enough to finally take the Erie out my health is at 147 <laughs> the Erie did the best thing he could possibly do he did not turn in if he had turned his nose toward me if he had turned his nose if he had kept turning okay 
See here, you can keep turn. You can feed it. Kept turning, and made his citadel more and more oblique. Remember, I can only citadel if that eerie is you know close to ninety degrees onto my gun. If he'd have come on around and and would have uh, uh, you know decreased the value to fifty, thirty, twenty percent, my shells would have bounced off of that citadel because the eerie's armor is that strong. The, my only hope was that he was going to stay going straight and, and because he wants to use his back guns. And that Eerie died, literally, so he could use... You know, I, I use the term, oh, you're dying to use your back guns. The Eerie died, was dying to use his back guns, and he did. He got his back guns to work, uh, shoot at me, but he died because of it. If he'd have just kept turning and forget his back guns, but turned so his armor was oblique to me, my puny, tiny, insignificant little shells would have bounced, just ricocheted right off of that heavy, eerie armor. But since he kept himself about 90 degrees true to my guns, my little tiny shells were, were able, with their velocity, to punch straight through that citadel. So, thank you, Malcor, or whatever, for going straight. If you'd have turned, you'd have killed me. That's the way it'd have been. You would have killed me, but you kept going straight. Kept second after second giving me the broadside. And that killed you, and it saved me. And uh, that's just the way it is. We watch his health go down by bunches. I can't do that to an Eerie. I can't do that to an Eerie any other way except this way, the way you're looking at it right now. That Eerie has got to have its back end off one side of my monitor and its front end off the other. For me to be able to kill an Eerie effectively. And he did the best thing an Eerie could possibly do. And I thank him for it. So, oh by the way, how long did that Eerie take? Well, he's dead at about 17, is that right? Yeah. Where are we out here? Okay, so he comes into my sight at uh, 3... Coming up on four. I'm zooming in, getting ready, looking for his citadel, and firing. All right, so here we are. My initially, we start with his initial hits at six. So he, in 11 seconds, he goes from uh, pretty healthy to dead in 11 seconds. That's this is the way I play. So um. When you, uh, you know, I'm doing something here. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's see where it was. Is it here? Uh, no, not here. Um, yeah, here we go. So, three hits and I'm dead. Uh, it's more. Would love to know how you do that consistently. I do that consistently because this is the way I consistently play. People say, you know, someone said, you always go to the same place. You're so predictable. Ah, that's right. Just like everybody else predictable. Well, they're probably sailing around here or whatever going over there. So I'll ease over here and see if I can't get a few pot shots. And I'll sail behind an island or head back away from them to get out of their range or whatever. That's predictable as well. But that predictably is keeps the outcome of the match up in the air. Okay, I don't know whether I'm going to kill you or you're going to kill me because we're only going to see each other every now and then to take a few shots at each other. The way I play, generally I'm trying to make it to where when you see me and I see you, I am so close to you that you there's no other boat for you to shoot at except me. And I know that. So I understand that you are the boat that's going to kill me unless I kill you. And with my puny little shells at point-blank range, I can penetrate most any, even up to an Erie, if it's under, you know, if it's under like 2.2, 2.3 kilometers, and it's relatively within 10 degrees of, uh, of 90 to my gun barrels and uh, 2.2 kilometers or less, I can generally citadel an Erie. I've done a couple, two or three citadels by shooting an Eerie directly into the nose at 
near point blank range, but that's 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 a freak shot, you know, to do that with these, something as stupidly inaccurate as a swan. But this is how I do it. Love to know how you do that consistently because I play the swan consistently, and I do what I do in the swan. What you have seen today, and when people are upset with me, the reason is that they don't play 10 or 15 minutes of a game in various, in various stages of health. Generally, when they play against me, <laughs> they can go from full health to dead in as little as 17 seconds because that's the way I play the swan. All right, this video has gone on for a while, but I thought that it was an exceptional... It, 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 everything it was it, so many qualities were here including uh, Gunnimans uh, 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 Gunnimals excuse me uh, statements that that were just part of this little battle uh, here um, I just feel like there was a lot of value to talk through what is going on and to understand that I don't do the impossible but what I do most other people don't they don't they don't understand what i'm doing when they try to do what i do you know i use islands too but they're two kilometers from the island all right they're a kilometer two kilometers from the island see my guns right now are actually pointed at the island in this i just happened to stop on this shot take a look how close i am to the island i am less than two tenths of a kilometer almost nobody else uses you know oh i'm hiding on an island they're two kilometers out so you people can just shoot over the top Gotta, you're going to have to actually see me to, to get me. I can drop any shots on me. Uh, very few people play the way that I do uh, and work that out. And so uh, I try to explain it so that people can see. There are some people that are beginning to play the swan like I am. I'm beginning to have a harder time in Tier 1 because I'm fighting more people that are thinking and not just sailing out in open water like chimps. But they're thinking through their taking tactical note of, of the situation they're making strategic decisions in oh okay i've got people over there shooting but i'm going to hang back i'm going to wait for my opportunity for for people in my section of the sea to pop up and i can surprise them and take them out as opposed to shooting across the map just to get a pot shot and giving my position away just to to get 75 off of this other boat you know and i've given away my position for 75 xp it's ridiculous so Anyway, uh, I would enjoy comments, criticisms. Now, if you criticize, i got a reason for what I'm going to do, and I'm going to, to defend myself. I will listen to your criticism. Uh, if it's valid, it's fine. If it's not valid, I'm going to tell you. It's not valid, I'm going to tell you why okay? uh, as well. But uh, I enjoy talking, and uh, I've done a lot of talking here. Goodness, an hour and 13 minutes on a, on a few, few minutes of, uh, of, of video uh, and such. But um, anyway, leave in the comments, and I will certainly answer and, uh, and certainly engage you uh, in strategic, tactical, Tier 1 play. Yeah, it can be hot and heavy in Tier 1. Come join us, huh? Take care.